Hi, everyone. This is the What's the Word podcast, where we dive into God's Word to seek a deeper understanding of the Bible and talk about how it relates to our lives today. Today is episode number one, which is titled The Power of the Tongue. My name is Roddy Martinez, and I am your host of the What's the Word podcast. Some of you listening to this podcast right now may know me from YouTube. I mean, the channel is pretty small (laughs) right now at the time of this recording, Uh, but that's where most of my work has started. The YouTube channel is called What's the Word? So if you haven't heard of it, please check it out. So before we begin with today's topic, I want to do a little introduction of sorts since this is the first episode of the podcast. Um, Recently, I was talking to my wife and I was telling her how discouraged I was about What's the Word? (laughs) I was explaining to her that I really wish there was a way for me to upload more content on what's the word on a more consistent basis because if you've checked out my youtube channel you know that i don't have exactly the best upload schedule compared to other youtubers uh so i told her you know i I know that god wants me to share his word with others and he's also blessed me with skills and video editing audio engineering music and theology and i really want to use all of those skills but with my day job I work pretty long hours and on weekends, and uh, we have a really small apartment, so it's not like I have a a studio set up or anything like that. In fact, whenever I do create a YouTube video, it takes me about an hour just to set up the equipment because I have to move all this furniture and (laughs) do a bunch of things just to have a way to record the videos. Uh, So here I was explaining to my wife that I wish there was a way for me to engage with others in a more consistent basis and, you know, on a a more consistent basis. And she told me, well, why don't you start a podcast? And this was something that I hadn't really thought of doing before. But as always, my wife is right. So it's (laughs) doing a podcast is much easier to do. And all I really have to do is do the audio, record the audio. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot. So um, that's today's the first episode. But don't worry, though, I'm still going to be making YouTube videos. Uh, I'm still going to be uploading on YouTube. It's just that this podcast will help me engage with everyone on a more consistent basis because it's easier to produce. And I'm going to try to upload once a week. Uh, Another reason I'm looking forward to this podcast is because it gives me a chance to dive deeper into some of the topics I've already made videos about. When I'm creating the videos for YouTube, it's pretty difficult for me to decide on exactly what information I'm going to include in the video. Uh, For example, in the last video I did on Genesis chapter 4, there were quite a bit of things that I wanted to put in the video that I just didn't really have the time for, uh, especially with the amount of time it takes to edit the video and create the animation and all that. Uh, But doing this podcast will help me go more in depth about certain topics that I wouldn't really have a chance to do with a normal YouTube video. The other reason uh, I wanted to do this podcast was because I feel it would give me a chance to show a little bit more of my personality. Uh, These podcasts will definitely not be scripted in the way that a YouTube video is. So uh, you'll be able to hear more of my, I guess you could say my authentic self. And um, it'll also allow me to get a little more personal with you all. Um, And finally, the other reason that I wanted to do this podcast is because it's going to give me a chance to talk a little bit more about things that are going on in the world and in the culture and explore, explore different ways that they relate to the Bible. I feel that the YouTube channel's focus is always going to be more of a Bible study and a source for theology. And this podcast will be more of a casual conversation of sorts. So there you have it. Those are the reasons I want to start the podcast. And without further ado, I think it's time for us to get into the topic of the day. So today's episode is called The Power of the Tongue. And we're going to be studying the effects of our words and taking a look at different parts of the Bible that speak on this. There's something very special in the words that we speak. Even God himself gives a lot of care and attention and the language and words that he uses. The Bible makes this very clear. In fact, in in the very beginning, creation itself was spoken into existence by God. God said, let there be light. Let us make man in our image. 
It is not good for be for man to be alone. Everything was spoken into existence because of God's word. And this is stated very clearly in Hebrews 11.3, which says, By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. The Greek term that's used here is logos. You may have heard that. Which it means word or speech. In the Bible, it's very clear that God pays very special attention to his speech. And as believers, we believe that God's word is perfect and serves as the basis of our faith. In fact, we refer to the Bible itself as God's word. And we know that God's word is always true and pure. And we also know that God's word is eternal. That's why John said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. I absolutely believe that there's something divine in the speech that God uses. But I also believe that God uses his word and his speech very carefully. And the question is why? I believe there are many reasons for this, but I think that one of the other reasons why God uh, is very careful in the words that he uses is because he wants to act as an example for us. I think that if God is careful in the words that he uses and has shown and demonstrated that his words have strong influence on others so that we know too that our words and our speech have very powerful influence as well uh, now please don't mistake me though I'm not saying we have divine power that's not what I'm saying I'm very much against the name it and claim it doctrine um, instead what I'm saying is that the words we choose to use in our lives have influence over many things and almost everyone and I think that we often forget that uh, so I want to take a look at Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. In the New King James Version, it says, uh, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. This is one of the most popular verses in the Bible, I think. And it's also one of the ones that we, as a society and as a culture, have become completely disconnected with. I mean, throughout our history, we've we've pretty much always had an ugly side to our nature as a result as a result of sin in our history. And so there have always been people who have said mean things or allowed themselves to speak in a way that creates destruction and in turn intends to hurt people. But I think it's pretty clear that it's different today, specifically today with social media, text messaging and online discord it's almost as if people don't understand the effect that their words have. All you have to do is spend a few minutes playing a multiplayer video game online, scrolling through TikTok or browsing through Twitter to come across some pretty colorful language and uh, pretty dark and vile threats too. As a culture, we don't realize that our words create a sort of cause and effect reaction where if we say something, depending on what we say and how we say it, someone could react to it accordingly. And this is a major problem that we have to be aware of. As Christians, we can't allow ourselves to fall into the habits of this world. Instead, we have to encourage one another to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world and focus on producing good speech to produce good fruit, which leads me to the second part of this proverb. The second part of this proverb often gets overlooked, in my opinion. Most people focus on the death and life or in the power of the tongue part of this proverb. And we often forget the second lesson here, which says, those who love it will eat its fruit. So if you love to speak life, you're going to reap life. And of course, if you speak words of death, you'll also reap death. There's a sort of metaphorical element here, which is common in the Bible's wisdom literature. It goes without saying that we aren't talking about a literal tongue, <laughs> but rather we're referring to what the tongue can produce, which is language and words and speech. And we're not just talking about life and death itself, but also positive and negative things in a much broader sense. So as Christians uh, who seek to be Christ-like, we should aim to speak 
good things that lift others up and encourage them and ultimately lead them to Christ. There are many ways that words can affect others. Words can affect us by causing us to act in a violent way, and our words will definitely play a part on Judgment Day. But today, I want to focus on our emotions. It's pretty clear that our our words can affect people's emotions. This actually doesn't require a lot of explaining. I guarantee you that everyone listening today has probably been offended this past week at least once by something that someone else said. It's not very difficult to make someone feel bad. In fact, it's actually a bit scary when you think about it how easy it is to hurt someone's feelings. It's not very difficult. I really like the way that uh, Proverbs chapter 15 verse 4 puts it. A gentle tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. I really like the way the Bible says breaks the spirit. The perverseness in it breaks the spirit. When something is broken, this means that before it was broken, it was working just fine. And there's nothing more disappointing than when things are going really well for you throughout your day. Maybe you just had something great happen to you or you just won some sort of award or achievement. And then someone says something negative about you or to you that completely breaks your spirit. Now, let me give you an example. Uh, I work as a high school music teacher. More specifically, I'm a supervisor of choir programs at at a school district. So I teach high school choir, but I also have to supervise the middle school choir programs as well, uh, sort of like in an administrative role. Um, So there was this one time when one of our middle school choir directors had just finished a competition with her students. And her students did really well. Her When the results were announced, all of her students were celebrating in victory and the teachers were enjoying time with them and, and everyone was smiling, having a great time. Um, it was a good day. Uh, then, as the students were approaching the bus, one of the students' fathers approaches the choir director and starts yelling at her because his daughter's phone had to be picked up during the contest. So uh, keep in mind that the contest rules said that no phones were allowed. And so the teachers are supposed to pick up their phones um, before they they enter the competition. And this was clearly stated in the itinerary that the the choir director sent out and also the permission slip. She made it very clear uh, about what was to be expected. She sent out phone calls and that sort of thing. Uh, But the father wasn't aware of it. So the teacher started telling the father, well, the rules stated very clearly that phones weren't allowed and that we had to pick up their phones and they had to be off during the day and that we would return the phone to the student after the contest. And I also put this in the itinerary uh, that you had signed. And then the father interrupted her and said he didn't care and that the teacher was unprofessional and that he was going to take her daughter out of her class and put her with a teacher that would actually cooperate with him. Um, And then, of course, you know, he, he, he was uh, <laughs> he started uh, using some pretty bad language in front of other people <laughs> that he was there. It, it, keep in mind that this was going on in front of other students who were trying to celebrate <laughs> and enjoy themselves. Um, and so th- this whole experience was pretty hurtful for that choir director. Um, and the teacher lost a lot of sleep over it. You know, she spoke to me about it in the following week. And she said, you know, that parent, that parent's response to me completely crushed my spirit i had just finished doing a great job with the students and my students had done a great job um and over the entire weekend i completely forgot about the good things that happened because of the way that the parent talked to me and the words that he was using which of course included profanity so what can we take away from this type of experience Well, let's ask ourselves this. What if we were the parent in this position? Or not even that. Let's be honest. We've all been in that position where we're so riled up over something that happened or something that was said, and and we really just want to lash out at someone. And we have all fallen short of the glory of God and have said very hurtful things to people that should not have been said. All of us have spoken death as in the Proverbs, have spoken death at one time or another, 
and have broken someone's spirit. Uh, the problem is this. You never know what someone else is going through. It's so easy to want to lash out at someone in anger or resentment. But don't forget that the person in front of you is someone's daughter, someone's son, father, mother. That person could be battling an illness. Uh, they could have just lost their job. They could have they could be mourning someone's death. And you could be the difference between lifting them up or tearing them down, causing death or causing life. It all depends on the type of logos or the type of speech that you choose to allow to come out of your mouth. But the good news, once again, is that our words can also breathe, breathe life into someone as well. When we go back to Proverbs uh, 15, 4, let's not forget the first part of that verse, which says, a gentle tongue is a tree of life. A gentle tongue is a tree of life. Just as God was able to speak life into creation, we can also speak a sort of life into other people around us. And just as God spoke words of comfort and grace and love to thousands of people in the Bible, you can also do the same to others. And just as God's word is eternal, your words can have a long-lasting impact on someone else's life. Every time you are at work with friends, family, or just leaving the grocery store, you have an opportunity to leave a lasting impact on others around you based on the words that you choose to speak. I'll give you an interesting example of something that happened to me once at work. There was a day when I was walking in the hallway of our building and uh, I saw a young man sitting down with his head down and he was crying. I don't know why he was crying so I thought it was very peculiar so I went next to him and I knelt down. I shook his hand and I said, Hi, I'm Mr. Martinez. I'm the choir director here. Are you okay? And he looked up at me very surprised and uh, said that he was going through some stuff. And I asked him if he'd like to talk about it, but he said he'd rather not and that he, he thought that he was going to be okay. Um, I ended the conversation by saying, well, look, my office is over there. So if you ever want to talk to someone, just come on by to my office and I'll listen. I know that you're not my student, but I want you to know that whatever you're going through, you're going to get through it. And he said, thank you. And I went back to my classroom. And that was it. The conversation was just about a minute long. And of course, I did report the incident to the school counselor so they could look into it and, and uh, call him out of class and that sort of thing. But a week later, I was walking to the teacher's lounge to get some coffee. And when I was on my way back, I saw that same student uh, yelling, hey, sir, sir. And I looked over and I saw him jogging towards me. <laughs> and I'll be honest, I didn't recognize him at first, but I eventually realized that it was the same student that I had talked to, uh, who I had talked to in the hallway the week before. When he came up to me, he shook my hand and said, uh, I've been meaning to go over to the choir hall, but um, I just want you to know that I'm very thankful that you asked me if I was okay that other day. Uh, you were the only teacher who cared enough to talk to me and I really appreciate that. And I'm doing better now. Thank you very much, sir. I was really surprised. And I answered back saying, well, I'm glad to hear you're doing better. I care about all of the students here, not just my choir students. So if you ever need anything, feel free to come on by. And he answered back, I sure will. You have a good day, sir. The conversation I had with him when he was sitting down in the hallway was so quick and simple. I didn't give him any advice. I didn't tell him anything profound. <laughs> All I did was say, hey, kid, you're going to get through this. Come on by if you need anything. That was it. And it meant the world to this student. And I say that to make this point. Just as I said earlier that it doesn't take much to break someone's spirit, it also doesn't take much to lift someone up either. You'd be surprised how little it takes to encourage someone else. All you have to do is have a gentle tongue when you speak to others. You speak good things to other people. If there's someone that you know who feels hopeless, you can speak words of hope into their life. If you know someone who's in fear, you can give them courage to pursue what it is that they need to do. 
And even if you know someone who is on their deathbed and has no more hope, you can be the person who holds their hand and tells them, hey, I know you're going to pass away soon, but you're not going to die alone. I'm going to be right here with you, and we're going to get through this together. So there are death and life in the power of the tongue, and all who love it will eat its fruit. The question is, which fruit will your words grow? Will you speak words of negativity, which could lead to sin and despair? Or will you speak words of life, which can lead someone to Christ? Of course, most of us want to speak words of life, but we can't do it alone. In our worst moments of weakness, we need to pray that the Holy Spirit intercedes and gives us wisdom and self-control to not lose our temper or carelessly allow a crude joke to come out of our mouth, but instead, we need to pray to have the power and self-control over our speech to change one life at a time, for the better and towards Jesus Christ. I'll leave you with this. I encourage all of you, myself included, to follow the advice that Paul gave to the Ephesians. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to deliver your word to whoever listens. We know that there's life and death in the power of our speech. And we know that as followers of Christ, we have a responsibility to pursue what is good in your eyes, Lord. And the words we speak should reflect what is in the abundance of our heart. I pray for forgiveness if there's been any crude or negative things that I've said that I shouldn't have earlier this week, Father. And I pray that the Holy Spirit can continue to work in my life and in the lives of our listeners to have the self-control we need to speak in a way that builds others up according to their needs and according to your will. We ask that you help us not to allow ourselves to conform to the ways of the world, but instead to be the salt and the light of the world, not just in how we speak, but also in how we act. We thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we all say, Amen. Thank you all for joining me for today's episode of the What's the Word podcast. My name is Roddy Martinez, and if you haven't already, please be sure to check out our YouTube channel, What's the Word, to see the videos that we've posted. And make sure to subscribe to this podcast and our YouTube channel so that way you don't miss a word. God bless you all and have a wonderful week.